This video is an introduction to using the GPIO pins on the ESP32 Node MCU. As always, you can follow along with the written guide on our website, which is linked in the description of this video. In this guide, we will use the following components. A breadboard, a 5mm LED, a resistor in the range of 1 kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohms, a resistor in the range of 46 ohms to 100 ohms, a 6mm push button, 4 jumper wires, a micro USB cable, and a 38-pin ESP32 Node MCU flashed with MicroPython. If you have not yet flashed your Node MCU with MicroPython, you can follow the previous guide on setting up an ESP32 with MicroPython. Let's start by inserting the Node MCU into the breadboard. Center the Node MCU at one end of the breadboard so that there is one row of pins on either side, and so that the USB port is off of the side of the breadboard. Once you are sure that the node MCU is centered and aligned with the pinholes, carefully use even pressure to press it into the breadboard. You will know that the node MCU is in all the way when you can't see its metal pins when viewing the breadboard from the side. Now let's create a ground rail. Plug one of the ground pins from the node MCU into one of the side rails of the breadboard. If your device is like mine and has its pins labeled on the bottom, you can look for a 38-pin ESP32 Node MCU pinout diagram online to avoid having to flip over the device. This diagram came with the Node MCU that I purchased. You can use any of the pins labeled on the diagram as GND, but I'm going to use the seventh pin down on the right side. Plug one end of the jumper wire into the breadboard next to this pin, and the other end of the jumper wire into one of the side rails on the breadboard. This entire vertical rail is now a ground node. Take your LED and plug the long end of it into the GPIO 23 pin. Looking at the diagram, this is the second pin down on the right side. Then plug the other end of the LED into an empty breadboard row. Next, take your resistor in the range of 46 ohms to 100 ohms and use it to connect the other end of the LED to the ground rail. I'm using a 68 ohm resistor. Plug your Node MCU into your computer and launch Thani. Make sure that your interpreter is set to ESP32 and that your port is set to the port of your device. If you do not see a REPL ready for input in the Shell tab, press the Stop button at the top of Thani. Copy or write the following code into the Thani editor. As always, you can find the code used in these videos in the written guide that goes along with this video, which is linked in the description. This code will blink the LED on and off 10 times with a delay of 1 second. After writing the code, save the file to your device as main.py. Then press the reset button on Node MCU to run the code. For me, this is the left button on the bottom of my device labeled EN. The code I just wrote is now running, and the LED is blinking 10 times. We just used a GPIO pin to output a signal from the Node MCU to an LED. Now let's read an input signal through a GPIO pin using a button. Unplug your Node MCU from your computer. Then place your button near the end of the breadboard so that it bridges the gap between the two halves. Also connect a wire from any of the 3.3 volt pins on the Node MCU to the other vertical rail on the side of the breadboard. I'm using the 3.3 volt pin on the top left of the node MCU. This entire vertical rail is now a 3.3 volt node. Connect one side of the button to GPIO pin 22 and connect the other side of the button to the ground rail. GPIO pin 22 is the pin directly below the LED pin. Plug in your node MCU and press the stop button if necessary to get a REPL in the shell tab. Then copy or write the following code into the editor. This code will print the value of the button pin every 100 milliseconds. Then save this code to your Node MCU as main.py and press the reset button to run the program. You will see that this program continuously prints the value of the button pin to the REPL. This is resembled by either a 1 or a 0, with a 1 indicating that the button is in a high state at 3.3 volts and a zero indicating that the button is low at zero volts or ground. When I press the button, you will see the output is not changing from zero, which is not the behavior we want. Stop this script and acquire an open REPL by pressing the stop button at the top of Thani. 
Previously, the circuit did not give the desired output because GPIO 22 is never set directly to 3.3 volts when the button is not pressed. A pin in a state like this is referred to as floating, meaning its voltage is in an indeterminate state. To fix this, we can use a high value resistor to connect the pin directly to 3.3 volts. Unplug your node MCU. Then use a resistor in the range of 1 kilo ohm to 10 kilo ohms to connect the side of the button that is connected to GPIO 22 to the 3.3 volt rail. I'm using a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor for this. Plug in your node MCU, press the stop button to get a REPL, and press the reset button on the node MCU. Now the program is continuously printing ones due to the button being connected directly to 3.3 volts through the resistor. When the button is pressed, zeros are printed because the button is connected directly to zero volts with virtually no resistance in between. Press the stop button to end the program. The last thing that I want to demonstrate in this video is another way of implementing a pull-up resistor entirely through code. Remove the resistor you just added that is connecting GPIO 22 to the 3.3 volt rail. Then edit the program to add a parameter to the button pin definition that indicates a pull-up resistor. Save this new program to your device as main.py and run the program. The program is still working just as before, even though I removed a physical pull-up resistor. Press the stop button when finished to end the program. Now take everything you've learned in this guide to write and upload a program to your Node MCU that turns on the LED whenever the button is pressed. Do not change the components on the breadboard while you do this. You can find the solution in the written guide at micronote.tech. Good luck. This concludes this guide. If you want to check out more of our guides, head on over to micronote.tech. If you want to support the creation of more guides and kits, you can follow us on Twitter or subscribe to this YouTube channel. Or you can buy a kit from our Etsy store. Any support is greatly appreciated. Lastly, we want to start building Micronote into a learning community in a couple of ways. First, if you have any questions or discussion ideas, you can post them in the community discord. Second, we want to start adding community content to our website. If you've worked on a project that you think others can learn from, fill out the community submission Google form to be considered for a community post. Links to our social media, Discord server, Etsy store, and community submission form can be found in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.